Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Lori and I wanted to do a video on a client journey again, another one. Um, the reason I'm doing this one is because I have had a handful of clients come in to Telos and the portals within Mount Shasta um, that have been light workers from a very long time ago, thousands and thousands of years ago, that have not lived in Lemuria, that have not lived on Atlantis. Uh, very different and very unique light workers that I've never heard of, I've never read about, um, and um, it's been coming to light. And so inside these journeys with people, so I wanted to share because um, my hope is that somebody will see this and it will resonate with them. And if it doesn't resonate with you, maybe there is somebody you know that it will resonate with and then you can forward this video on to them. Um, so before I start, uh, first I just wanna thank all of you for being part of uh, my channel and for being part of this journey uh, that we are all on together. Um, and thank you for subscribing to my channel as well. Um, and I am hoping to try to do two videos a week um, and get as much information out right now as possible um, as the energies increase on the planet. Okay, so let's begin with this journey. So this is a woman um, that uh, has a son, five-year-old son. And what was provided, the information that was given to her in this journey was that um, she came down about 13,000 years ago. So the earth, what people call uh, fell from grace. There was a fall from, from, from these higher dimensions. When the earth was designed and when um, the systems of light star systems uh, brought in, seeded the planet, it was on a higher frequency than it is now. So a fifth dimensional frequency. Okay, and what happened, um, which is part of the sinking of Lemuria and Atlantis, is that the, the Earth shifted down, it fell down into a lower frequency, as did the humans. So when this happened, there is a initial call for light workers. Now you also have to understand, I've spoken about this before, um, there were no need, there wasn't a need for a light worker, a volunteer, until the earth moved into lower dimensions, okay? Prior to that, there wasn't a need. It was already in this beautiful frequency, which we are shifting into, right? Which people call the new earth. So it only became necessary for there to be light workers and volunteers on the planet once the planet shifted down into lower frequencies, the third dimension. There are Lemurians and there are Atlanteans that decided at that time to become a light worker and a volunteer. Um, and so they sunk and then they reincarnated over and over again to be here right now to participate. What has been coming to me through these journeys, and again, there's been a handful of clients that have been given this information, is that they, there was a, an initial call that went out thousands of years ago as the earth was, as the earth already shifted down into the third dimension for volunteers, for the beginning, kind of like the, the pre-wave of, of light workers and volunteers. And so there were uh, thousands of beings that came from all over the place, light beings, to volunteer way back when. And so what they have been doing for thousands and thousands of years as a light worker, a volunteer contracted, they have been assisting the planet and humanity to be able to get to the space where all of us are right now. So that when the big call went out back in 1987, the clarion call, they call it, that was a very loud call that went out, a very necessary, extremely important call that was really going to catapult and shift in a dramatic way uh, the trajectory of Earth and humanity. And that's where you hear about all the star seeds and um, the first, second, and third wave volunteers that Dolores talks about, Dolores Cannon, 
Prior to that though, the original first call was thousands and thousands of years ago. And there weren't many, there were thousands, but there weren't millions, right? Like now there's millions of us. Um, and so these light workers have been doing their work lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. Um, and you can consider uh, ascended masters are part of those uh, light workers and and volunteers. You know, Jesus is one of them. These are these are people that we know of. We can kind of uh, conceptualize and understand, right? Uh, Mary Magdalene, Mother Mary. Um, they all lived. Uh, Saint Germain. You know, these beings lived on the planet and they did their light work. They did their their volunteer work. Um, but there are thousands of volunteers that are on the planet in this lifetime that have that are not ascended masters because that wasn't their role that wasn't their 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 path they have ascended or they have uh reincarnated over and over and over again bringing in light doing whatever work they're supposed to do so in this lifetime these beings are the ones that are searching for their purpose, knowing that they are, they're exhausted. Okay. Many of us are exhausted, but these light workers are exhausted and they feel very like, um, they're, they're done. It's almost like you, you've got to be kidding me. There's one more thing I have to do. That kind of thing. Knowing deep down, there's some, they're a light worker. There's something they're supposed to be doing. They've done, they've done it for so many lifetimes that they just intuitively know there's something I'm supposed to be doing here, but these light workers have nothing to do. So here's the beautiful part about um, the messages that were given to these clients. They don't have any, they don't have to do anything in this lifetime. They have done all of the work preparing the planet and humanity for right now. And so in this last lifetime for them, and this is their last lifetime. So, um, as a volunteer and a light worker. So they will, when their, uh, body and spirit decide that they are done being on the planet, they can, uh, go back to wherever they want to go. Different star system, the system they came from source. Maybe they want to go into the new earth. It's totally up to them, but they don't have to do anything this lifetime. So it can be a challenge because intuitively inside of them, there's a desire, a need. I'm supposed to be doing, I'm supposed to be doing something. And what they're supposed to be doing is enjoying. Over and over again, the message to them is like, relax, kick your feet up. There's nothing you need to do. Um, and there's a lot of questions that these clients have, you know, um, and it's extremely important for these clients to have uh, past life regression, QHHTs. Um, if that's needed, because in a QHHT, you'll be able to go back and perhaps tap into what, what did you do as a light worker? What did you do as a volunteer? And that way they can hold on to something. Um, because in this lifetime, you can't remember what you did. And so you really feel like you're not doing anything. Um, and the reason that these clients and the reason that these light workers don't have anything to do, there's no purpose work given to them is because they've done so much work. And this is the, they, this is the lifetime where it's like, relax. You know, why did they choose to come down this last lifetime? Because they want to see what all the work's done. You know, they've all the work they've put in, they want to, they want to bask in it. They want to watch it. They want to move through that ascension process. Right. But they don't want to do, they don't need to do any of that, uh, work anymore. Purpose work, um, for whatever reason. Um, it's hard for the mind to conceptualize and to understand what spirit does, why spirit makes the decisions it makes, right? So it's like, well, why would spirit come in this last lifetime and not have a purpose? Why would they not want to do something this last lifetime? I don't know. I don't question it. I just know the information that's given. And when it's the information is given to multiple clients, um, I pay attention. And so, um, that is, this is an important piece because a lot of people are searching for their purpose work. And there are a lot of people that aren't going to find it because they're done. They've been doing work for thousands of years to get us, the volunteers that have come down in the last hundred years, able to come down and do their work. So the other beautiful thing about this journey for this woman was 
She has a child that's five years old. And this child is a star seed. Her son came from the same system she came from. She came from the Lyrian star system. Sorry, I never told you that. She came from the Lyrian star system. And, um, and her child, who's five years old, was in, this, was in the journey with us. And her child, higher self, is the individual, is the being that nudged this client to go into Telos. Meaning, usually it's the higher self that nudges you to go in and have a journey, right? Get, get in here. You need to learn. You need to receive these messages. You need to get this guidance. You need to remember who you are, what you're doing here. Get your soul's book, all that stuff. It wasn't her higher self. It was her son. And the reason that her son nudged her on this higher, higher realm of who we are, right? Nudged her to go in and thank goodness her higher self told her to do it was because she needed to remember who she was so that she could remember who her son was so that she could remind her son. So her son as a higher self, as that higher aspect of self, nudged the mom to go in so that the mom could remember who she was so that she could remember who her son was so that she could remind her son. And the reason this is so important for all of you watching this right now and being called to this is because many of you um, have starseed children. And it is extremely important to remember who you are so that you can remind your child of who they are. And the, the, these star child children, these star seeds that have come down are potent. Their path is extremely focused and um, it's like a tunnel vision. They aren't going to have the issues that we've had. Um, they aren't going to need to go through the emotional crap that we've had to. Um, but they have chosen and they've also chosen very easy lives. They've chosen, most of them have chosen parents that are either awake or waking up, right? And so this mother was on the waking up process. She was awakening to everything, but she needed a jolt, right? She needed to really figure, remember all of this so she can have this in her consciousness so that she can look at her son going forward and remember that you know, it's not like there's specific things that she has to do. You know, they, they were, there's not a specific, she does, it's just not her responsibility to wake him up. It's her responsibility to remind him. Big difference. Meaning you, she's not responsible for when he wakes up. She's not responsible for his purpose work. She's not responsible for making sure that it goes smoothly. All she's responsible for is making sure that she does everything she possibly can to very gently and very easily kind of remind him, nudge him, just slowly, um, so that it's not as difficult as it can be. You know, these children have to still go to school. These children have to still um, interact in, that, in the world that we live in, right? And so they have picked, they have chosen families and parents that are awake so that it's easier for them. And the other thing this child said to the mother was, you'll see me, you'll know, you'll, you'll, you will read me through my eyes. So, cause she was trying to figure out like, how is she going to know? Or, you know, how do you communicate in this, in this other realm with a young child? And the child said to her through my eyes, um, you will see me, you will hear me. Um, you will telepathically communicate with me through my eyes. So if you are kind of thinking maybe you have a, uh, a child that might be uh, a star being, first time when in a physical body, um, look through their eyes. Also realize that they have a very difficult time being in a physical body. Um, it's extremely uncomfortable for them to be in a physical body. 
Um, and this will play out in a lot of different ways with either like physical kind of um, ailments, uh, really having a ton of energy. And this isn't ADD or ADHD. Um, this is just the body is always having to move. Um, listen to what these children say listen intently to what these children are saying and allow it to be okay. And in fact, even engage with it and make it a comfortable, normal thing. For instance, if they say that they, um, you know, that they um, had a dream and let's just say something simple, right? Or let's just say they're in a room and they say something about how they, you know, they're, they're speaking to, to something that's not human or they're speaking to angels or they, they know that um, there's uh, an, another friend that they have here, right? Whatever it may be, make it normal. And, and not only make it normal, meaning yes, I do too, or yes, other people have said that to me. I've heard that before. You know, what does it look like? What does it feel like? What does it sound like? Um, you know, um, this is what my experience has been like. Make it normal, normalize it. Because as they are starting, especially the young ones, as they're starting to understand who they are and what they're here to do, um, they need reinforcement that it's okay. They need reinforcement that they're not crazy because what they see on the outside is not necessarily going to reflect what they're under, what they're experiencing. Um, so, uh, so that's, that's the journey. That's the, that's the experience that I wanted to share with you. So there are volunteers that have come down 13,000 years ago around that time frame when the earth fell from grace into the third dimension. That is the first time volunteers came onto the planet. These volunteers, have been reincarnating over and over and over again to be here right now. And in this lifetime right now, if you're one of those volunteers, there is nothing for you to do. How are you going to know if you're one of those volunteers? You got to feel into it. And, you know, um, you can ask when you go to bed at night. Our dream state right now is so active. There's so much information being given to us in our dreams right now. Um, you can ask when you go to bed. Uh, am I this volunteer? There's not a lot. So um, even though there's thousands, it's not a lot compared to the billions of people on the planet. So, um, you know, it's, it's a slim chance that you are. But if you if this resonates with you and you're listening to this, you've been guided to this. This is your first time ever on my channel. This is the first time ever listening to me. Then feel what it feels like in your body. If your body's vibrating, if your body is, is um, tingling, if there's something about this message that resonates deeply in you, you're probably one of those volunteers. If there's somebody you think about while you're listening to this, you're like, oh my God, that sounds like so-and-so. Maybe it is. Give them the video. See if they resonate with it. Um, and again, just to, just to reiterate, these volunteers are exhausted. They're done. There, there's an anger inside of them and almost like a rage, kind of like, this is ridiculous. I don't want to do this anymore. Why am I not doing my purpose work? Um, and, and they don't have a purpose that's necessarily directly in front of them. Um, now, granted, a lot of us don't have our purpose work directly in front of us, but these people will never. Um, however, let me just do a side note. She was told that her gifts are going to start to um, open up for her. And she can do anything she wants. If she wants to use her gifts and start providing a service, she can absolutely do that. If she wants to serve humanity in some way, she can absolutely do that. So it's not to say that they don't, there's nothing for them to do, just sit back and relax. They can do purpose work. They can do whatever they want to do. But in terms of a contract and what they're here to do on the planet this last lifetime, it's they don't have to do anything. They can actually sit back, relax, and understand that they are responsible for where the planet and humanity is right now. They're responsible, those light workers, because humanity and Earth did not get to where it is without light workers being on the planet from the get go. Period. It didn't. There was always light workers working from the second, from the inception of the Earth shifting down to lower frequency. And so the beautiful piece also about this message is that this beautiful woman also has a starseed child. And so 
uh, how can she best groom this starseed child to remember himself? And, and what a gift that this child um, communicated through his higher self to her higher self and said, get in there and remember because you need to remember who I am. It's beautiful. It's, 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 it's how spirit works um, if you listen. And it's, it's, it's the magic of the moment right now. Um, so I'll do another video. I've been staying away from the starseed talk because I just don't like labels. I don't like, you know, uh, boxing things into, I don't know, something's just making me not want to go into that arena. Um, but I may do a video on starseeds and kind of describing a little bit more of what they're doing why they're here, how to in, engage and um, remind them. Um, but this video was just a, remem a remembrance of other types of light workers, um, and that uh, you know light workers have been coming down for fifteen thousand years, fourteen thirteen thousand years. Um, so, anyways, that is it. That is uh, my story for today, and. Let me know if this resonates with you or if you know anyone that this resonates with, um, send it to them. Leave your comments down below. I appreciate every single one of your comments. I listen to, I will read every single one of them. Um, and I really, really deeply appreciate them as well. So that being said, I will say goodbye. I'm going to do a couple more videos. Um, but, um, for now that is it. I love you all so much. Thank you so much for being here. And it means everything to me that you're listening and watching me. Um, and, and just know that these, these messages come into me and I'm told to share them um, for you. Uh, they're not for me. They're for you. They're for you to receive. They're for you to feel. They're for you to, um, to activate you. And so even if this message wasn't for you, you got activated just by listening to the message. Thank goodness uh, for that. But anyways, um, have a great rest of your morning or day or evening, and I will see you soon. All my love. Take care.